According to some later traditions, and I kind of like this version, Zeus took his father's scythe and sliced him up the way Cronus had sliced up Uranus. Cronus was thrown into Tartarus in teeny tiny pieces. Supposedly, that's where we get the idea of Father Time with his scythe, being deposed every year, every January 1st, by Baby New Year, though it's difficult to imagine Zeus in a diaper and party hat. Some versions claim that Zeus released Cronus from Tartarus many years later, either to live out his retirement in Italy, or to rule the Isles of Blessed in, in Elysium. Personally, I don't buy that. It doesn't make sense if you believe that Cronus was chopped into bits, and if you know Zeus, you know he's not exactly the forgive and forget type. Anyway, Cronus was done, the age of the Titans was over. The Titans who didn't fight against the gods were allowed to stick around. Some, like Helios and Selene, kept their jobs. Some even intermarried with the gods. Zeus named himself the new king of the cosmos, but he was smarter than Kronos. He sat down with his brothers and said, Look, I want to be fair about this. How about we throw dice for control of different parts of the world? Highest roll gets first choice. Hades frowned. I have rotten luck. What parts are we talking about? The sky, the sea, and the underworld, Zeus offered. You mean Tartarus? Poseidon asked. Gross. I mean the upper underworld, Zeus said. You know the nice part nearer to the surface? It's not so bad. Big caves, lots of jewels, riverside real estate on the river Styx. Huh? Hades said. What about the earth itself? Greece and all the other lands? That will be neutral territory, Zeus suggested. We can all operate on the earth. The brothers agreed. Now, the sisters were not invited to this little dice game. I know, totally unfair, but that's how it went down. No surprise, Zeus got the highest roll. He chose the sky for his domain, which made sense because of the lightning bolts and all. Poseidon got the second highest roll. He chose the sea and became the supreme god of the waters above Oceanus, who got pushed even farther to the margins of the world, and Pontus, who was mostly asleep in all the muck, was asleep all the time anyway. Hades got the worst roll, as he expected. He took the underworld as his domain, but it kind of suited his gloomy personality, so he didn't complain much. The hundred-handed ones built Zeus the gleaming palace that he'd always dreamed of at the top of Mount Olympus. Then Zeus sent them back to Tartarus, but this time as jailers to watch over the Titans. The hundred-handed ones didn't really mind. At least now they were the ones with the whips. The elder Cyclopses went to work for the gods. They constructed a workshop at the bottom of the sea near the island of Lemnos where there was lots of volcanic heat to power their forges. They made tons of special weapons and other fun collectibles, and had a good health package with a week of paid vacation every year. As for the gods, Zeus invited all of them to live with him on Mount Olympus. Each of them had a throne in the main hall, so even though Zeus was in charge, it was more like a council than a dictatorship. They called themselves the Olympians. Well, I say they were all welcome in Olympus, but Hades, not so much. The guy had always creeped out his siblings. Now that he was lord of the underworld, he seemed to bring doom and darkness with him wherever he went. You understand, Zeus told him privately, we can't have an underworld thrown up here on Mount Olympus. It would make the other gods uncomfortable, and the skulls and black stone really wouldn't go with the decor. Oh, sure, grumbled Hades. I see how it is. Anyway, that's how things got started with the gods on Mount Olympus. Eventually, there would be twelve thrones in the council chamber and a whole bunch of other gods who didn't have thrones. The Olympians figured that now they could settle down and rule the world in peace. There was only one problem. Remember that the Earth Mother Gaia was taking a nap all this time? Well, eventually she would wake up. And when she got home and found that her favorite kids, the Titans, had been thrown into Tartarus, Zeusy was going to have some explaining to do. But that's a tale for another day. Now it's time to meet the gods up close and personal. Just be warned, some of their stories might make you feel like Kronos after a big glass of mustard nectar. <laughs>